Hi, my name is Carrie Wallace. Thank you for coming back. Or if you're here for the first time, I am an artist resource that likes to share tips, tools, and techniques and things that help me on my art journey. And I hope they help you as well. Today's focus is getting inspiration from wherever. And lately it has been this beautiful fall season. I traveled to Tennessee with my husband and hiked several days and collected a lot of inspiration there, including leaves that I've painted and I had purchased some new brushes before I left. This is the new set. It's the Silver Black Velvet set of three. Highly recommend them. I hadn't purchased any traditional watercolor brushes in quite a few years. Most of my watercolor paintings are done with the aqua brush, which, ha which has the water in the handle, and it allows for me to paint on the go, and I don't have to have buckets or, or jars of water. And I wanted to hone my skills as a studio watercolorist, and I decided I would treat myself to some new brushes and I have really enjoyed these. So I will try to put a link to where you can purchase these. I didn't buy them on Amazon, but I've seen them on Amazon before that. I believe I bought them at Blick. So I wanted to practice some of the things that I hadn't done in a while and um, just see the difference with those, these brushes versus the ones I used to, do, used to use. And most of the paintings that I'm going to show you today are from this set and I'm really pleased with it. It's the uh, it's Jack Richardson and Company. It's semi moist, which I really <laughs> wasn't familiar with when I bought them. Well, let's see if I can open it up. It would be helpful. Hold on. It's not that hard. I was just opening the wrong end. So here's the set, and I have a key that matches the colors. I always do that for my watercolors because you really can't tell what these are, especially in the dark. And when I got this set. I, they, these, these are full pans of watercolor, half pan would be half this size, but they do pop out. So when I purchased it, I took my thin point Sharpie and I wrote a name on the pan as well as the location in the palette where it belongs. The part of this that just saves me from frustration is sometimes when I close this, because they're semi-moist and they might be slightly damp, sometimes they catch on the ridges of this and when I open it back up, then they come out of place. Or if I happen to drop it, it might come out of place. So I was so very thankful I had already done that when um, they did fall out and I was able to get them back in order. So not only do I have them written here in order on the hard plastic, but I also had this sleeve that I always keep with me and I just cover it in plastic so it can be wiped off. Now, some people might not think that's necessary because there is a chart on the back, but that chart on the back, I can't look at while I'm painting. So even though it's helpful to see, I needed it. Uh, I needed it the other way. So I'm working with these paints, my new brushes, and I just get a couple of yo a yogurt containers for my water and I uh, have one that with, for clean water and one for mixing. Being fall, I love to find leaves on the path. This one's very similar to the last one. I put a shadow, I cast a shadow with the light and paint it. That'll be in an additional video coming up soon, or it might even be posted before I show these. This was another leaf that I picked up on a hike. I experimented a little bit with color for a black bear. As long as you get the value right, the, um, excuse me, it's going to, it's going to be interpreted right. Value right, and it'll be good. So with these brushes, I wanted to try a few brush strokes and experiment with those before I did anything that I would consider a studio painting. So this page is full of trials of washes to get a soft gradation of color. I tilted my, my paper, started at the top, worked my way down, and I finally got the amount of water that water ratio paint that, that gave a nice transition of color. And I'll, I'll video that later, or you, know, you can find that on a, on a different video if you want. But also using a dry brush effect where you just barely lay the brush down and, and practicing with different foliage that I was going to paint in a picture that I wanted to practice and get comfortable with. So anytime you're going to start a larger piece, set aside some time, unless you're just in the, I don't use watercolor all the time. I just finished an oil painting and sometimes I'm working in pastel. So if I haven't done watercolor in a while, and I, plus if I have a new material like this, these new brushes, I wanted to play with them a little bit to get more comfortable with them. And when you're comfortable with them, then you'll relax more when you do your art. This by no means is anything to go, oh, yay, that's wonderful. Well, it's not, but it is. It is in the fact that I played with the brushes. I 
practiced with them, I wanted to see how each one would react to fully loaded with paint and give me what technique I wanted. So I'll show you what I painted. This is the scene that I painted. I was also experimenting not only with brushes, but with using gouache. When I worked on this, I started with the watercolor wash in the background, had to let that dry, then came back laying in some of the darks and establishing that. I had to paint the blues and the purples, but I couldn't totally leave the lights here. It just it wasn't reading right. So I ended up mixing up some white gouache that I later came back and painted on top. And I painted on top wet enough that some of the under painting of the watercolor kind of mixed in. But I was really pleased with this and I'm going to do more and we'll probably do a video of something similar because just the playfulness of the watercolors and trying something new. It was fun. So let me know what you think of this and what you'd like to see in the future. Uh, I haven't been talking to my YouTube family very often and um, I just want to thank you for those of you who have followed along and look at my videos when they come out. Some of the most popular ones are the ones dealing with plein air and some of my tips and uh, hints of hacks, what to do and what not to do. So I'm glad those are helpful for you. Please let me know what you'd like to see, how I can help you as a fellow artist, and I will see you soon. Brad and I are here for a beautiful morning on the 20 mile trail up to Shuckstack Fire Tower. We went there the last time we were here, and this is a different approach trail. So we're excited about the day. It'll be a little longer than last time, and um, should be a beautiful, clear day for some wonderful fall views. to stop and take off a layer and get some naproxen for my hip because I'm going to the top. This is Billy and Ben, my hiking partners that ride on my back. I think we're about a mile from the AT. I'm having a little struggle on the uphill today. Didn't drink near as much water as I should have yesterday. We're on the AT. Yay! Hiking on a ridge right now. I love ridge walking. About the first flight we've done all day. First five miles was uphill. Look like it, but it's all uphill. coming down from Shuck Stack Fire Tower. I'm feeling much better. Going downhill, slight angle, so much easier than climbing up. <laughs> 
for five miles. Believe it or not, we are back to the car about eight hours later and we had a wonderful day. I had a little struggle getting up the mountain, but we went over 13 miles today, so I am very happy. It was beautiful and we have some wonderful shots and hope you enjoy the video whenever I put it together. Thank you, Brad. You're welcome. He's the greatest hiking partner. So encouraging when I'm not doing well. Takes good care of me. You need a partner like that. and I are about to start another hike on a brisk cool morning. The temperature's in the 30s and we're going to do Finley Cane Loop today. So hope to see some pretty trees and enjoy the day outside. 